Welcome to the new. Every experience with God's Word promises to be refreshing and transformational. Receive today's message with high expectations as it brings power, light, and a fresh anointing to your life. We're going to preach, and we're going to do all that God has in store for us together this morning. So I'd like you to respond. Is that okay? Is that okay. All right, so let's start our Bible this morning. The theme for the service is love is war. And I remember somebody sliding into my DM when they saw the flyer for the service said, war, bow. And I just told him, now, whoa, <laughs> glory be to God. And how many of you were a bit confused when you got the flyer for service? How many of you were like that? When you got the team for service, you felt like, what is love is war? It was too late by. It was Who felt like that? Um, so don't be confused. You will receive divine direction. Some people don't understand what I just did there. 2 a.m., you will get it. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let's turn our Bibles. First John chapter 3, and we pick it up from verse 1. Though the team of to this morning service is love is war, I will really be trying to introduce us again to two things. Number one is the concept of the love of God. I know that you've heard it over and over again, but it is one thing that we must learn to assure our hearts in. It is one thing that we must learn to remind ourselves over and over again. And I believe that that is even the reason why the Holy Spirit chose the team for today's service to be love as well. Because there is always a battle going on. There is always a battle going on. And the battle is not so much as it is in Sambisa Forest. It's in your heart. Glory be to God. It's not a battle that is happening somewhere else on the face of the head, but in your own heart. So the first thing I'm going to do by the Holy Spirit this morning is to reintroduce us to the concept and the revelation of God's love. And the second thing that I'm going to do is to help you see how to wage a war with that love. You know, you have to fight for your life. And, and this is not me trying to get you to also love something. You actually have to fight for your life. Because the way Romans chapter 12 says it, it says that there is already a corruption in the world. And until you keep on renewing your mind, guess what you're going to believe in? Corruption. Scripture says that we know this, that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. It says that he that does not have the love of God in him, he that does not love, he that does not allow that love flow as an overflow out of his heart to other people, but first to himself, that man lives in darkness still. You know, we started this, I believe we started this year with the team, the Goshen Experience. And we understand that. Pastor Shola has done justice to that. That it is not a place, it is a territory. And that territory is in Christ. But how many of you know that it is possible for your streets to have lights, but your house does not? Because you did not pay NEPA bill. And NEPA has come to do what? Cut your light. And so a lot of us are in Christ, but we're still living in darkness. The reason is because... There is no love flowing out of our heart. It's possible for you to be in a city of light, but you actually are in darkness. And scripture says, if there is no love, then there is darkness. You can't have either or. You can't have both, rather. You can't be on the fence. Am I talking to you this morning? You can't be on the fence. It is either you are in love. How many of you are in love? Hope you didn't fall this morning, sir. It's either you are in love or you are in darkness. Where do you want to be? And let me tell you, darkness is just a sum total. We know what unders, we know what happens under darkness. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Corruption, killing, stealing, destroying. All of those things are going on in darkness. And the way to shed light on darkness, you know, the moment light comes, what happens to darkness? Oh, come on, I didn't hear you. Basic science. The moment light comes, what happens to darkness? It disappears. So the moment your heart, my heart, is filled with the revelation of God's love, then we can begin to experience the development that light brings. For in him was what? And that life was the light. What is that light? The development of man. 
but you know it was given to us because of love. First John chapter 3 and verse 1. And I want you to read the next three verses with me aloud as, as loud as you can. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knows, knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the slaves of God. Now are we the subjects of God. Now are we the Nigerians of God. I want to touch on some things this morning. I, I hope the Holy Spirit allows me. Now are we from a particular tribe? Because some people are more versatile. The tribe is real to them than being in Christ. Their physical location is real to them than where they are from. The moment, I like to say this, that the moment you became born again, you are no longer a Nigerian. You are no longer a citizen of the earth. You are an heavenly citizen passing time on the earth. You're a child of God. You belong in heaven. And you are actually in heaven. It's the dual reality of the new creation. You are actually in heaven. Seated in heaven. Before the father of light. Oh, come on, you didn't get that. In the presence of the father of light himself. So I have a question for you. Why is there darkness in your heart? Why is there darkness in your life? Come on, say with me, with everything you've got this morning. I'm a son of God. I'm a son of God. Oh, now, if you're a lady, you can say that, you know, now. You know that, right? There, there are no Twitter people in church this morning. I'm a son of God. They are still not answering me. Oh. They want to tweet. I'm a son of God. We're going to say that till that sinks in. And you say it with some consciousness. I'm a son of God. I'm a son of God. I'm a son of God. Two more times. I'm a son of God. I'm a son of God. You know why that is important? It's important because of the kind of love that the Father has towards you. It's an unconditional love. In fact, it starts the first verse by saying, What manner? We haven't seen this before. We haven't experienced this before. We haven't come across this kind of love before. What manner of love is this that the Father has towards us? Let's read on from verse 2. Now are we the Son of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. In other words, there is a potential, there is a possibility. There is something that was locked up on the inside, that was deposited at new birth. There is something that you and I receive as a result of the love of the Father towards us. And it makes all the difference in our lives. It makes all the difference in our reality. It makes all the difference in our existence. It says, and we know. Come on, can you read with me still? And we know. And we know that when it what shall appear, we shall be like him. Oh, has Jesus been revealed to us? Has Jesus been revealed to us? John says the word came... And was made what? Flesh. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. There is something that Jesus Christ came to do for us, amongst other things. And, and this is very important because it's, it's almost like the clincher. You know what an inch is in the door? You know what an inch is in the door? If you have a very powerful security door, with the latest technology, all of those things, but there is no inch to put it in the doorpost. Will you be safe? You cannot be safe. And this inch I'm talking about is the revelation of Father. 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 
Everyone called God, God before Jesus. Everyone called him, I mean, it was different things to different people, different revelations. To one, it was, I am that I am. To some, it was Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha. But there is a summation of all those things. There is a sum total of all the names, all the identity, all the personality of God in the right proportion. Let me tell you what I'm saying. Because if you see God as all-powerful, but you don't know about the love of God, what you are going to imagine is a megalomaniac. And that's what the world is experiencing today. We, we see God as a God who can do everything. We see God as a God who is all-powerful and all-knowing. When you have just those two things, but you don't have the love of God, it is as though you have a very huge and mighty man who is just going by his business and sees a child on the floor and a car on, on the leg. He can lift it, but he has no will, no compassion, no love. And so we keep on begging God, not knowing that he has made us sons. He has made us sons. That is what puts everything together in the right proportion. He is father. He is father. And Jesus described the kind of love the father has. He said, if you been evil, know how to give good. Think about that for a moment. You are evil. There's corruption. But out of your corruption, you still want the best for your children. It says, how much more shall your heavenly father? And now let me insert what James said. From in whom there is no variableness. There is no shadow of turning. It's just light. He is the father of light. There is purity. There is transparency. There is nothing hidden in him. Yes, God has secrets. But the secret has been revealed in the sun. We beheld the glory that was once locked up. Now in Jesus, full of grace and truth. And what he came to give to us is that inch there. This is not just God. This is not just Jehovah. This is not just Rapha. This is Father. It's Father. And it's Father because the Father loves. You know, you know God was saying something in Isaiah 49. He said... Women give birth to children and they, they want to give suck to their child. It's impossible for them to forget about the baby. But even if they forget, think about that for a moment. But even if they forget, I cannot forget you. Listen, it's not as if God is still trying to make a commitment to not forgetting you. That is who he is. You are ever before him. Your face is always before him. He says that the air of your head are not counted. They are numbered. They are numbered. So if you're a guy and you shave, you go to your barber to your barber's shop or whatever it is. And the moment the blade eats one strand of air, God says that is number 602. He skipped number 549 and he moved to number 552. God knows exactly the number of your head. Do you know what it takes for you to sit down and count? Then number, ask sound, guys, laboring cables is not easy. Yet God puts a label on each of your air strand. You know, a lot of us have not been able to approach the presence of God simply because we feel like, what is there for me? What, what, is, what is in that presence? What, what is there for me? When you look at yourself in the mirror, you say, no, be your, you want to be your type, they define for that side. Just stay for where you did now, but I've come to call you out of low diva. I, I, I've come. I, are you ready this morning? I've come to come out, call you out of that low place and call you back to the place where you ought to be with God. You are a son of God. You are a son of God. And there is nothing you can do that will change that. Listen, 
the love of God towards us is not based on any other thing but himself. And that is why it cannot change. It's not about your stature. It's not, a kind of, it's not about the kind of spec that you are or the one you wear on your face. It's not about the kind of things you do. <laughs> now we are, we are on shaky grounds. But I will still stand on that shaky ground. Because we have to shake everything that can be shaken so that that which cannot be shaken will be established. The love of God. It cannot be shaken. It's the foundation of the Christian race. It's not based on any other thing than the personality of God. God is love. And he that does not know God, that does not know love, does not know God. Even in fact, you see, let me, th- let me insert something into your, into your devotion. When you say good morning, don't say good morning, God. Say good morning, Father. If you are still struggling with the word, Father, say good morning, love. I know as I, as I mentioned that thing now, it was a lady's face or a guy's face that popped up in your mind. They don't worry. We will renew our minds, all right? There is pure water by the word. There's something called the washing of water by the word. You understand? All you just have to do for your head to be, you know, there's something called washing and resetting. You, you just need some washing and what? Resetting, carry your head to the washer and let him wash with the water of the word that you might see that that baby is not really the baby. Eh? Oh, you thought I was kidding. No, no, no. It's not. Good morning, love. Good morning, love. Good morning, love. Good morning, love. Because this is the thing. You get drawn towards the person you know has deep interest in you. And it doesn't matter. Let me tell you, you see, some of us, there are things that you can tell your friend you met in university that they don't burn you well to tell your mother. You know why? There is an image that when you think of just just then, it's not even a bad thing, no. You know that there's a possibility that three months from now it might become bad. Man will just talk. But you can go to your friend and say, Guy, babe, this is what I'm going through. But you know where we have gotten into trouble? We are not vulnerable in the presence of the only one that truly loves us. We are not. We are not truly vulnerable in the presence of the one that that not only loves us, cares about us, and is compassionate towards us. But we are vulnerable in the presence of people who have no investment in our life. This one died for you, gave his only son for you. Went through thousands of art and pain. Wait, wait, wait. Do you think even God was happy when, in, under the old covenant, the sins of the people were covered just for one year and they always had to renew their license? He wasn't happy. Waited till the right time to kill and slay his son. And in the fullness of time, the son died rose up again welcomed us into the home and said now i was the only child in this house but come and meet your own father come and meet your own father and then it says you can truly be vulnerable let us therefore come boldly before the throne of our father love that sits on the throne of grace that's what you need You won't have access to mercy, to grace and compassion if you're not full of the revelation of the love of your father. And it's not as if those things don't exist. They are actually there. But you've been taught, legal reality, vital reality. So say this word with me. I receive the love of my father. Come on, say that with me. Say, I receive the love of my father. 
Say, I receive the love of my father. And now, let me tell you this. In case you missed it, let me repeat it because it's strong in my heart to say it. You can be vulnerable in God's presence. I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't care what you're going through. He's not going to catch you. He caught you already. He caught you already. And when he caught you, what did he do? He loved up on you. Washed you clean. You know the beautiful thing about God's love is... It does not matter how bent you are on being dirty. He is also bent on purifying you. Like, you say you have a shangri. God has ten times a shangri towards you in love. I will not let you go to hell. I will not let you destroy your life. I will not let you backslide. I will not let you become a statistics of divorce. I love you. And I want everything good and kind for you. I want everything good and better for you. So listen to me. If you are in trouble, run home. Run home. The quicker you do, the better for you. You know, you know let me even tell you something. Maybe some of us can relate to this. It is not, you know, some people, they were holy from whom? We are not. We were not. Even though we might not have done some deep things like some people might not have gone as far as some people, but all of us carry sin come, is follow come. And I remember dealing with certain things when I joined church, you know, in those years, and the Holy Spirit would say these words to me, whenever you are in trouble, come. Never run away from my presence. Always run back to my presence. Let me tell you why that is. And the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are they, they are condemned they are penalized they are destroyed they are cancelled they are saved that's the only place you get safety because if the world puts you back together they can pull you down you don't understand what I'm saying to you if the words of a man can put you back together, therapy is good, but it's the word of a man. If a word of a man can put you back together, the word of a man can pull you down. But if the word of his grace pulls you back together, nothing can, because forever his word is settled. And it's the word of love. It never changes. If you get the renewing of mind by the word, you are saved. It's the reason why some of us relapse. It's the reason why you have addictions and, and you relapse from time to time. You try in yourself, in your will, in your... And, and that can only go as far as it can. Oh, oh, but I hope you know that your salvation is eternal salvation. The one that comes from God. Go and claim the rest. Claim it. Father, I'm home. I've done it again. But I'm here. I'm here. An angel is saying, for here? Yes, for here. I'm not proud of what I've done, but I still come boldly. I'm not giving excuse. And you see, that is the issue. Instead of you to just go home, JJ, you will not be giving excuse. But they don't want me at home. If my mama see me now, she feel kill me. You just imagine a moro going straight for your head. We picked up those things as a child, isn't it? But I hope you know that you have changed family. You have changed lineage. You are now a child of God. And you are a new creation. You can always go home. Say to your neighbor wait for me this morning. Say, I can always go home. And you can always go home too. You see, that thing or that time when you begin to think that you cannot go home, that God doesn't want you, it is over for you. 
there is no coming back from this you, you know sometimes as believers we underestimate the power of the blood of Jesus we underestimate the power of the blood of Jesus the blood that has been washing millions billions of people for over 2,000 years and it has not yet been exhausted and can actually never be exhausted because by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified and let me tell you let me help you make a connection those who are sanctified at the righteousness of God who are the sons of God who are the beloved of God What am I trying to say? There is no... See, no matter how far you've gone, the blood can bring you back. No matter how far... You say, I ah, know me, I've gone too deep. It's too late to turn back now. I've gone too deep down to come... Hello, it's a lie. On part of when, it's a lie. And you see, that thing there, that moment when you make that statement... What you do understand is that there is a battle going on. There's a battle going on. And your heart is the battleground. Your heart is the battleground. There are things called arguments. There are things called imaginations that are coming to you. There's someone called the accuser of the brethren. That is I hope you, own, you, you, you heard that title well. It's not the accuser of sinners. There's nothing to accuse. It's called the accuser of brethren. Those who are saved. In other words, if you are being accused, you have something. If the devil is trying to steal from you, you've got something. You don't give in. It's come for your precious. You don't give in. It's the accuser of brethren. He has come to steal. He has come to kill. He has come to destroy. And let me let you know something. It's not just about your life. It's the generations inside of you. It's not just about you. I always just try to imagine if Joseph's head was never correct. You know what I'm talking about? If his head was never correct... If he took offense at the conception of Jesus and refused to believe that he was spirit, or even after he agreed, there was like, How can you be pregnant for spirit? And we are engaged to marry. You know, the, deep, the heart is deep. You've, you've deeply hurt me. Let me tell you something. When Joseph found out that Mary was pregnant, it was hot. How am I sure? How do I know? Try it. I make them impregnate you. Just try them. Maybe no try them. Oh. <laughs> Pastor Shola is here. I can imagine Pastor Shola saying, stop it now. Don't try it. It was hot. Pregnancy test. Who, where, how, when? And you know, Adabamimo, eh? Ha, 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 Adaba. Wow, we have some oranges to peel. It was deeply hot. But for the plan and the purpose of God, he had to let it go. He had to let it go so much so. That the reversal was total and complete. You don't understand what I'm saying. Joseph was healed of that incident. To the point that he then laid his own life on the line to protect baby Jesus. They say forgive. You say no I cannot. Uh, it has gone too deep. It has gone too long. You are not only killing yourself. You are also hurting a generation. And you know the thing is. We don't know who they are. That's why it's not real to us. If someone was hurt, I always think about it. If Dr. K was offended and didn't do ministry, or Pastor Shola was offended, will we all be here? 
in sitting down, go and ask him how much things he had had to forgive when he was rising up. And so we come with philosophies, we come with things. There's a war going on. There's a battle going on for your life and for what you carry. Remember in Revelation, the dragon did not just come for the woman. It came for what was in the woman. There's something in you. 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 The habit is only a distraction. There's something in you. The addiction is only a distraction. There's something in you. And it is only the love of God that can totally heal you of that stuff. Because how do you subject yourself to a doctor that you don't trust to perform operation on you? Yet God wants to deal with it. But you are not home. You are not submitted unto the Father of Spirits and leave. It's that love thing. You feel like, yes, God is powerful. What if when he's trying to put my life together, he just changed some, a setting? God cannot mismanage your life. There's something there. The baggage you brought from your earthly family is only just trying to steal more things from you. There is a war going on. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. Oh, pray in the spirit, everybody, if you can. Pray in the spirit, everybody, if you can. Sombrinandus kapli manda pali malo forma katali eno kumbre dosi kambalati. Samunini mini ki minu kumbre de kiti na mando sofre de body. Samunangi again a bedungu dumundu kuti and bali a kabarusa. I sense in my heart that there is some healing going on. Simunun kabrinanda skiprumunde pami imino sikata. The love of God is permeating your soul. Shani e kelemehe. We trust your hands, Holy Ghost. We trust your hands, Holy Ghost. They are the hands of love. They are the hands of love. So we ask that you place it upon us and you make corrections where it's needed. You make switches where it's needed. Make a correction. Make a switch. Make a switch. Make a switch. Mahina Marabata. Override something. There is a system override. By Inanani Akomba Hadi Abada. That ought should have kept you bound. That ought should have kept you bound. But you're coming out of it. You don't know how you're going to do it. You don't know how you eventually end up on the other side. But you're coming out of it. In the name of Jesus. You're coming out of it. You see yourself differently now. You see yourself differently now. I'm the righteousness of God. I'm the loved of God. God is good to me. God, God is good to me. I'm beloved. Oh, run the sea, pom, 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 pom. <laughs> Let me tell you the interpretation of that. Now your tears are over. Now your, your agony is over. Now you come into the glory that was destined for you. Now you are entering in, marching in as a prince of a king that you are because you have let go of the weight of hurt. Because you have let go of the weights that are carrying you. You are free to fly. Now fly higher. You are free to fly. Now fly higher. Enter into that which was prepared for you. Enter into that which is ready for you for the taking. In the name of Jesus. If that is your word, receive it in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. There's a reason why it's called the finished work. It's finished. <laughs> you know, I, I, I just sense a snap. It's finished. Something just snapped loose. Hi, Alabasha. Many on all sekabada bas. Hey, lift up your hands to the Lord. Me in a suframan the skip pronounce kepan the skipper. Mehina na 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 bahi kamahana mados. Oh, let your love reign. Let your love rule. Aina na si amanasa. And that love is light. It produces light. Because if we are not full of love, then that we are full of darkness. Let your love go. Let your love enter. 
Let it permeate every single place. Let it permeate every single place. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, love. Thank you, love. Thank you, love. Thank you, love. Hallelujah. You can be seated, please. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. You can help me put it up in the Amplified because of time. We do not war according to the flesh from verse 4. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For the weapons of our warfare are weapons of flesh and blood. But they are mighty before God. For the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. Next verse. In as much as we reward, do you know the meaning of the word refute? In as much reward, dapada. Send it back to where it's coming from. Counter it. In as much we counter every argument and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that itself up against the what and who is God who is God so what can be the pure rest the most pure knowledge of God the knowledge of his love and we will lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ the Messiah the anointed one but we're still on the scripture, but you know, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 says something. What does it say? Because it would mean, I know you know it. Proverbs 4 and verse 23. Keep God your with all, for out of it comes. Why is that word God in that scripture? You know where my God is now? What is he doing? Is securing a property. Guard your heart. Do you see how valuable you are? You know there are houses that don't have security. Do you know that? There are, there, are, there are properties that don't have security. But there are some you must, they don't only fence it. They build gates. Then there is someone manning the gate. Then there are certain properties you have mopo at the gate. It says, guard your heart. You are that valuable. You see, there are parallels in scriptures. You are that valuable. But let me tell you something. It's not really just you that is valuable. It's what is on the inside of you. It's what you have on the inside. Can you place your hand on your belly and say, I'm valuable? And I carry treasure. I carry something valuable. You know, let me tell you some of the things that is valuable on the inside of you. There's a dream. There's a purpose. There is a vision. And, and, and that is the reason why the devil is coming at you. And his trick is all this fallout around us. Masturbation. It's all this fallout around us. Luring people into prostitution from need. It's all this fallout around us. Addictions. Arts. There are people in this room, at least five of you are just sensed by the spirit, whose father has hurt them deeply. And the reason is because he does not even want you to start the race. And if, should you start, he wants to plant a time bomb in you that the moment you enter into destiny, goes off. 
That's, that's what is happening there. That's the trick of the devil. You see, woe unto him who is at ease in Zion. And a lot of us know how to do spiritual warfare. But have you tried to wage war with love? Have you tried to wage wars with love letters from your father? Have you tried to read over yourselves the vows of your union over and over again? You know, it has been found out in, in, in couples um, counseling that sometimes if you can just get the couples to go back to their original vow, vow rather, and to say it again to one another, they not only recreate that experience, but that spark comes, uh, comes back in some place and sometimes. Have you, not for, have you forgotten that you are espoused to Jesus? Your wedding ring, his blood. His blood, his life. He paid the bright price with himself. <laughs> and just so that the marriage will not succeed, the devil says, you know what? Questions. Does God truly love me? Am I, is there something special about me? You know, you know that some people are actually smoking away their life because they feel like there's nothing important about them. Want to work below? Oh, but come on, somebody, there's something about you. If there is nothing about you, there is the precious blood of Jesus. If there is nothing about you, you are a royal priesthood. If there is nothing about you, you are a chosen generation. If there is nothing about you, you are the apple of God's eye. If there is nothing about you, he knows the thoughts and the plans that he thinks towards you. If there is nothing about you, there is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. Don't tell me there is nothing about you. Don't tell me, you know what, I'm not even seeing, I, I tried to stop, but, but when I tried, I couldn't. Let me tell you something the Holy Ghost said, I should tell you this morning. You are not your addiction. It's not you. You are no one and the same. The parasite and the victim is not the same. And you know, the person who truly sees that thing is God. And he knows how to deal with it. How does he deal with it? He says the word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. And he divides asunder the bone and the marrow. And it is a discerner, a distinguisher of the thoughts and the intent of the heart of man. There's something called word therapy. Sign up today. Don't only learn to check yourself into a therapy session and you see that is something about room 707 is what therapy is what therapy sir ma brother comrade is what therapy because if the demon goes by flogging by casting by binding but he comes back and the place is still empty swept well kept but there is nobody in a beating. Let the word of Christ dwell richly in you, in all what wisdom. Something has to be there when you've been freed and delivered, waiting for when the devil tries to come back again. Uh -huh. So when he comes back, you say, hey, You cheated me the, the last time. Oh, yeah, what is your argument again? It is written. He mentions it, you say, it is written. You say, you see your shape. Oh, fine. Uh -uh. Look at me. Fearfully and what? Wonderfully made. Expect the Lord made me. I'm a speck. 
He created me to specification. In his image, in his likeness, I look like my daddy. Live my big head is like my daddy. Live my shape is like my daddy. That's the way my father wants it. So I am not insecure. I'm secured in the love of my father. You carry me in your hands of love. You rock me on forevermore. That is the father that we have. Guard your heart with all diligence. Let me, you know what happens in the heart? In case you missed it. They came to Jesus, I believe it's, it's um, Matthew chapter 14 or thereabout. And, and this is what they said to him. Matthew chapter 15 from verse 11. And they, they said to him, how come your own disciples don't wash hands when they eat? Everywhere. I mean, those guys, they were accused of everything. They like party, they like food, they don't fast. Now, even the food they eat everywhere, they don't wash hands when they are eating. This will help you. This will free you. Oh, it's going to free someone. And Jesus said, they don't need to wash hands because what goes in through their mouth goes into their belly, their stomach. And it hangs up somewhere. We know the place. But what actually defiles, do you know what that word defile means? It means to change the makeup of something. What actually resets and change the makeup of something is what comes out from within him. The thought, and then he went on to explain it. When they asked him, what is the meaning of the parable? He said, it is the thought that is coming out from you. It is the words that is coming out of your mouth. If you have believed a word growing up that said you are good for nothing and the makeup you came from from heaven has been changed, you can change the makeup again by the word of God. Let me tell you, that is what you are guarding when you are waiting this war of love. When the devil comes to you and says you're not good enough, you have always been you have always been a failure. You tell him, I have, not, I have not always been a failure. I failed a couple of times. But this time, I am perfected. Write these two things down. These are the things you guard. When you're guarding your heart. You set a watch over your thoughts. And you set a watch over your words. That is the way. Do you even know that that's the way love expresses? That's the expression of love. That's the expression of love. Set a watch. Your thoughts. Your words. Check your words. What are the things that you say about yourself? Do they align to what love has written concerning you? What are, what are the thoughts that you think do they align to the intentions and the, and the will of God as documented in scriptures? So, 2 Corinthians 10 says that you pull down those arguments. You cast down those imaginations. You pull down those strongholds because they start as thoughts and they start as words. You don't even, nobody is with you, but you don't even allow yourself to think about yourself the manner you are about to think about yourself. No, I'm not going to think about myself that way. I'm going to think in the line of the word. It says putting on the whole armor of God. Did you notice that the only thing that is offensive in that armor is the sword of the spirit? Which is what? The word of God. That is what you use to fight this war. The word of God on your heart. The word of God on your lips. And you go find out scriptures about your redemption. Find out scriptures about how much God loves you. And the things that he has done in your life because of that love. And you remind yourself daily. You remind yourself daily. You remind yourself daily. It is very important that you say it. Because the moment you say it to yourself, there is a reconfiguration. There is a washing of water by the word. There is a renewal. There is a reset in glory be to God. You don't fight thoughts with thoughts. Somebody says, is it important I say it? Yes. You fight thoughts with words. 
the argument coming to you is word you counter and refute it by words i'm loved by god can we rise up on our feet i'm loved by god god loves me god loves me god loves me can you say that with me god loves me say that over yourself his banner over me is love 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 he loves me so much that he knows the thoughts that he think towards me he loves me so much that he has declared the same in his word he loves me so much that his actions towards me are the actions of love for if god gave us jesus how shall he not also with him freely give us all things including the second chance that you need including the break that you need including the healing that you need including the deliverance that you need lift up your hands if you need anything from god this morning go ahead and ask for it go ahead and ask for it go ahead and ask for it and remember the way you come is that you come boldly glory be to god go ahead and ask for it in the name of jesus go ahead and ask for it Hallelujah. All right, don't stop praying. Lift your hands one more time and just pray one minute. One more minute. Father, we just thank you. Glory be to God. I stand, I stand in all of you. Lift your hands. time I stand I stand only God Let's take it one more time. In all Lift your hands. of you, oh, I stand, I stand, I stand in of you. Oh, I, I stand in of you. Holy God, oh. word can we put our hands together wow no that's that's for yourself now let's put our hands together for pastor John everyone don't stop 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 Amen. All right, and finally, let's put our hands together for the Lord. All right, media sound, please. This uh, this is sounding like the voice of heaven. One more, keep clapping to the Lord. Keep clapping. Just just before you take your seat. All right, please take your seat. Take your seat. You know, I, I was sitting there and I was just thinking to myself that. Um, the new teachers and the new pastors are my favorite to listen to. Honestly, like I, I mean, I'm not retiring yet, but I can't. Don't let me say it. But 
Amen. 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 Not I mean, no. Amen. 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 Ah, ah, see, see word now, like today bread. Pure word. Glory to God. All right, let's package our offerings quickly. Let's package our offerings. You know, while while Pastor Joan was was speaking, I just really, you know, sense in my heart. Um, especially people who are dealing with maybe some challenges and addictions and and all of that. All right, let's minimize the movements, guys. All right, let's put some decorum. There's too much movement. All right, in the house. So let's minimize the movement, please. Thank you. Amen. Um, and so while he was teaching, I, I, I was reminded of the adulterous woman in the Bible in John chapter eight. Um, in John chapter eight, let's let's open there. John chapter eight. Um, give us the TPT version. I want to show you something there that's so powerful and I believe that the message this morning is to open the eyes of people um, particularly people who are dealing with one addiction or the other um, all right let's start from verse verse 2 verse 2 all right all right everyone let's read it together quickly one two ready and read then at dawn, Jesus appeared. <laughs> so he sat down and taught them. Next verse. Verse 3. One, two, ready and read. Middle of his teaching. The religious scholars and the Pharisees broke through the crowd and brought a woman who had been caught in the act of, a, of committing adultery and made her stand in the middle of everyone so this woman right here was literally caught in the acts it's not like she has finished it was while the movie was going on they, you know they caught her head and they said, hey you all right next verse verse four then they said to to jesus teacher we caught this woman in the very acts of adultery verse five now, this is where it gets very interesting. Look at what they said to Jesus. Now, they were speaking the word back to him. And they said to him, let's read together. One, two, ready, and read. Doesn't Moses' law command us to stone to death a woman like this? Tell us, what do you say we should do to her? Next verse, verse six. One, two, ready, and read. They were only testing Jesus because they hoped to trap him with his own words and accuse him of breaking the laws of Moses. But Jesus didn't answer them. Instead, he simply bent down and wrote in the dust with his finger. Next verse. One, two, ready and read. Angry, they kept insisting that he answer the question. So Jesus stood up and looked at them and said throw the first stone at her next verse verse 8 1 2 ready and read and then he bent over again and wrote some more words in the dust next verse verse 9 upon hearing that our accusers slowly left the crowd one at a time beginning with the oldest the youngest let's read the last verse verse 10 1 2 ready and read until finally Jesus was left alone with a woman still standing there in front of him so he stood back up and said to her dear woman where are your accusers is there no one yet to condemn you verse 11 let's read that as our last verse verse 11 1 2 and ready want you ready and read looking around she replied i see no one lord jesus said then i certainly don't condemn you either go you know what what pastor jumon taught this 
afternoon. So powerful. Let's put our hands together for him one more time. And I truly think that the fullness of this message, you might not be able to get it until you go back and listen to it again because so many things were said there. But I want to buttress something that he said, especially for those who are dealing with one form of addiction or the other. And I want you to listen very closely to this. You see, what these people came to do with Jesus was that they came to present the law to Jesus. And they said, if you're caught in the act of adultery, then Moses says that this is what we should be done to this woman, which is to stone this woman and probably stone her to death. Now look at what Jesus did. Bible scholars have said that Jesus bending down to the ground and writing, remember that the law given to Moses was written through the finger of God. And so Jesus bent it down and was writing the law to them. This is why that scripture says they became angry again. Because he was writing the law. Now remember this. That the moment the law was given to Moses. Listen to this. The moment the law was given to Moses. The 10th commandment. There was Aaron on the ground floor with the other Israelites. And while they were there. They were waiting for Moses long enough. And Moses did not come. And they got angry. And, Mo and Aaron said let us build for ourselves a golden calf. Da, 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 da. And Moses got the 10 commandment from God and came to meet them where they are. The first thing Moses did, the moment he received the 10 commandment, which is the law, the first act of receiving the law was him coming down and breaking it. So the law was broken the first day it was received. The first day it was received. So Jesus was only writing down to them to say, this thing has been broken already. But they wanted to see the law enacted to that woman's life. And Jesus looked at her and said, Listen, woman, no one condemns you. Now, if you look at Romans chapter 8, verse 1, the TPT version, look at this Romans chapter 8, verse 1, because the way to come out of addiction is, like he said, is not to run from God, it's to go back to Him. Look at Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Look at the first thing this scripture is saying. It says, so now the case is closed. There remains no accusation or there remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Jesus, the anointed one. Look at me everyone. If you are here and you are dealing with any form of addiction whatsoever the way to deal with it is not to run from God whenever you commit the act the way to deal with it is to go back to him and tell him that he's the only one who can fix you I mean we've heard of stories of people who they were smoking they don't want to smoke they were drinking and while they were drinking they would keep declaring I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus one day I'm telling you you just lose taste for that thing one day. Glory be to God. We hope you were greatly blessed by today's message because God still has so much he wants to share with you. So stay connected every week to experience uplifting and life-changing moments in his presence.